when I was 17 years old, all I wanted was to get into Waterloo Engineering. I was just fascinated by their co-op program, their engineering buildings, and just the idea of being a Waterloo Engineer. I worked insanely hard on my grades and extracurricular activities to the point where I honestly didn't have much of a social life, just so I can stand out on my university application. Until one day, I got this email. On May 4th, 2016, I was so excited to have been accepted to Waterloo Engineering. So in this video, I'm going to fully break down the entire application process and explain to you how you can also get accepted into Waterloo Engineering if that's something you're interested in, which I assume it is since you clicked on this video. This video will be broken down into four parts, admission average, AIF, adjustment factor, and video interview. And then at the end, I'll give you a quick summary of what the admission process is like at Waterloo from my experience and from what the director of admissions at Waterloo Engineering says. You'll also find timestamps for everything in the description. Let's start off with talking about the admission average. As you probably know, it's made up of six courses, English, advanced functions, calculus, physics, and chemistry, and then a sixth course of your choosing. Now, this is really the only number you can control out of the four numbers that go into your admission score. A common myth is that the University of Waterloo cares about grade 11 marks. They really don't. They really only care about your top six courses in your grade 12 year. They only care about grade 11 if you're interested in early acceptance, but for regular acceptance, just focus on getting the best grade 12 marks you can. Ideally, you want a grade 12 average of at least a 95% to maximize your chances of getting in. Now, if you have a lower average, you can still get in, but it just makes it a little harder. Like now you rely more on your AIF and your video interview to really help you beat other people who have a 95% average or higher. And according to this chart by the deans of admissions at Waterloo Engineering, you'll see that if you have a 96%, this means that your probability of getting accepted into like management, nanotechnology, or civil engineering is around 95% and only 80% of chance of getting accepted for mechanical and mechatronics and electrical engineering, and only 40%, 40% for biomedical and software engineering. Dang! Personally for me, to get into mechanical engineering at the University of Waterloo, I had a 96% grade 12 average, and I didn't take any IB or AP courses, to be honest, taking these courses doesn't really help you get in, but you do learn more when you do take these courses than other people who didn't take them, so you do have a little bit of advantage once you get in. But if you don't take them, that it's not going to affect your chance of acceptance. So to sum up, you really need to get a 95% average in your grade 12 or higher to really maximize your chance of getting into Waterloo Engineering. And if you want to know more about how you can actually get such a high average, I made a video talking about my note-taking process that actually helped me get that average that I'll link in the description and I'll also put in the card up below. The AIF, also known as the Admission Information Form, is worth up to 5 points. And this is where you talk about so you're not talking, this is where you brag about your extracurriculars, your work experience, your interests, and what you aspire to be in the future. But I gotta be honest with you, according to the admissions office at Waterloo, this is that most people get between 1 out of 5 to 2 out of 5 on their AIF. They usually save the highest scores of like 4 out of 5 or 5 out of 5 to people who have like accomplished really cool things and got like national or international awards. But these beasts only make up like 10% of the applicants. So so I think you should really worry about too much. And also, let's be real here. Like, if someone, let's say, is a world champion in gymnastics, then probably not going to be applying to Waterloo Engineering. So the fact that they usually give people like 1 out of 5 or 2 out of 5 shouldn't really discourage you. All right, here are a couple tips that I think you should implement in your AIF that I think will help you do really well and score as high as possible. First, don't say any of the generic stuff like, I used to play Legos growing up, so, you know, I feel like I was destined to be an engineer. A lot of people say that, and I don't think that'll make you stand out. Instead, talk about any experience you have with engineering and how you think that experience will be beneficial to Waterloo and will help you do well in your program. For example, talk about were you part of robotics, were you part of science club, what kind of engineering stuff did you do in high school? Another thing to keep in mind is you shouldn't spend too much time saying Waterloo is amazing, they're so innovative, I love their co-op program. Like, Waterloo obviously knows that stuff and you're just wasting space talking about them. Spend all that time talking about yourself because I mean, at the end of the day, there is a character limit and just the more you spend talking about yourself, the better your chances are of getting in. Obviously, spend a large chunk of your AIF talking about your extracurricular activities. You know, some of them obviously should be engineering related, but not all of them have to be. So keep that in mind. Now, when I was applying to Waterloo Engineering, these were some of the extracurricular activities that I talked about on my AIF. First, I was president of a club in my school called STEM Club. Uh, I was also part of a bunch of sports teams in my school. I was also one of the lead actors in my school play in grade 11 and grade 12. I was also uh, involved with like peer tutoring where I would tutor like younger uh, high school students about subjects like math, science, physics, calculus, 
things like that. I also had a part-time job on the side that would work out on weekends. It was at a fast food restaurant. But yeah, these are the five main things that I think made me sign out on my AIF. Another thing I recommend to put on your AIF is to explain your accomplishments really well. So for example, instead of saying I accomplished X or I accomplished whatever, instead say I accomplished X by doing Y, which resulted in Z. You know, when you're doing that, you're explaining what you did, how you did it, and you know, what was the importance of some of the accomplishments that you have. Now let's talk about something really interesting called the adjustment factor. When I was applying to Waterloo back in like 2016, this was just a myth, but recently, a couple of years ago, Waterloo said this was actually real. Here's how it works. Basically, once you apply to Waterloo, you apply with your admission average. Waterloo may reduce that average a bit based on how previous high school students that went to your high school did once they got into Waterloo Engineering. So for example, let's say someone that went to your high school got a 96% average in his grade 12 year and then went to Waterloo Engineering and ended up you know, getting six or even failing. That tells Waterloo that your high school inflates grades and then when you apply the lower your grade to sort of you know, match what they expect you'll get once you get into Waterloo. Is it fair? <laughs> I don't know. Now the average adjustment factor is around 16%. Which means if let's say you had a 96% grade 12 average, Waterloo expects that you'll probably have an 80% average in when you want to get into university. And so if the adjustment factor for your high school is lower, let's say like 10%, that's really good and will help your chances. But if your adjustment factor is really high, like 25 or even 30%, then that will really hurt your chances. For example, let's look at two students here. Student X has a 93% average and went to Bell High School, which has an adjustment factor of 9.1. This means that their adjusted average is 83.9%. Student Y has a 98% average and went to Grimsby High School, which has an adjustment factor of 27.1. This means that their adjustment average is 70.9%. So just by looking at that, Student X has a higher chance of getting in than Student Y, even though Student Y had a higher admission average than Student X. If you want to read more about this and you're curious to know what your high school's adjustment factor is, I'll put a link in the description that will show you what the adjustment factor for a bunch of high schools in Canada are. Now let's talk about the video interview. This is actually something recent that Waterloo added. I personally didn't have it back in 2016 when I was applying, but I believe they added it in like 2017, so that's the year after I got in. Uh, but regardless, the video interview is worth three points and it's really important to nail it. Now, according to the director of admissions in Waterloo Engineering, he says that the best way to score really high in your video interview is to talk about your future aspirations and your motivation for pursuing engineering. Now, this video interview is supposed to resemble like a future co-op interview. I've done a lot of those co-op interviews and I'll tell you the best way to prepare is to do mock interviews. So have your friends interview you, maybe family interview you, because that will get you comfortable talking to people about your you know, life goals and your aspirations as an engineer. Another thing to keep in mind that I've learned from friends of mine who've done these video interviews when they were applying to Waterloo is these interviews will ask you like creative thinking questions. So practice and like research online creative thinking questions so you can come to the interview prepared to answer them. Here's what the admission process at the University of Waterloo for Engineering is like. First, they take your admission average, which consists of the top six grade 12 courses you're taking in high school. They take that average, subtract an adjustment factor based on the high school you went to. Then they add up to five points for your AIF and then up to three points for your video interview. And obviously the higher the score you have, the greater, the greater chance you have of getting accepted into Waterloo. Now, I know this time can be really stressful and overwhelming because trust me, I was so stressed when I was applying back in 2016. And a piece of advice that my friend always tells me when I'm in these really stressful situations or stressful interviews is to act like you're the smartest person in the room. Now, even though you may not be, but if you act that way, you'll be a lot less stressed going into these interviews or doing these applications. But let's be honest, the University of Waterloo is just a business, right? Their goal at the end of the day is to make money. And so to achieve that goal, they want to accept students that will help them make the most money. And they want students that won't fail or drop out. Because if you drop out, that means you're not paying tuition for all five years, and that's bad for them. So they want to hire students that they know will succeed and will pay them tuition for all five years of engineering, which makes Waterloo happy. Another thing to keep in mind is the University of Waterloo probably wants people who are creative, show leadership skills, because if that's what you do, or if that's you know if you are a natural born leader, that means you're likely to start businesses or work for really successful companies, and you'll make a lot of money. And when you make a lot of money, you'll be willing to make generous donations to the University of Waterloo, which makes them happy. So you should really keep those two things in mind when you're applying and you know, show them on your AIF that you can be a good leader, that you're creative, and show them that you're really passionate about engineering and you obviously won't drop out and you're smart enough and you'll be able to handle it because that'll, that'll really benefit them and then it'll 
except you. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value and I hope you get into world engineering. If you get in, so you know, not if, but when you get in, DM my Instagram the great news and so we can celebrate. And also make sure you like and subscribe so when you get in, you can continue watching my videos so not only do you get in, but stay in and survive the hell that you're gonna face in engineering school. Don't worry, it's worth it, but just, I'll be dropping nuggets of wisdom to help you through it. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace!